Okay, you've got your testers ready to test your next big idea, but you might be surprised how quickly things can get messy if you don't manage your testers properly in test flight. In this video, I'm going to be giving you advice, tips and tricks so you and your testers can become one, you know, kind of like Mr. Megagi, wax on, wax off. <laughs> Now, before we just dive straight in into creating groups and whatnot, I think it's super important to talk about the two different groups when you're actually testing. So when you're testing in App Store Connect, there's actually two types, there's internal and external. Now, the best way to think about it is internally, you know, you kind of have your team where everyone's in your team and external is testers from outside of your team. When you're doing this as well, because you have two different types of testers, it's actually possible to create two different types of groups. So you could have an external test group and an internal test group for you to manage your users and I highly recommend that based on the type of tester that you have you create the groups that's relevant to them now first thing we're going to do is actually look at how we can manage and create our internal testing group and also as well manage our testers so you can see here on the screen that I've actually got a you know project here for an app I have on the app store that's actually part of a course where I teach you how to work with core data I'll leave it on the screen here if you want to go and check it out but you can see that I've actually already got my internal testing and external testing groups set up already. But if you want to add someone new, what you're going to need to do, first of all, is make sure for internal testing that they have an Apple ID and they have an iPhone where they have the test flights that the test flight app installed. So once you've made sure they have that, <laughs> because if you don't, trust me, if, if you don't have that, you're just going to be in a circle as to why it's not working. But once you make sure that they have that, you actually need to invite them to your team. Now, in order to do that, it's quite simple. All you want to do is on App Store Connect, go to Users and Access at the top here, hit the plus button. And then here, you want to enter their first name, last name, and the email, which is their Apple ID, where they'll receive the invite to your team. So it's a two-step process. You need to invite them to the team first and then invite them to the build which i'll show you in a second now you've entered their email in here now unless they 100 need higher access i recommend that you stick to using marketing because there's no need to give someone admin access if all you want is for them to test your app so give them marketing and then if you need to you can choose specifically if you want them to only be able to access one app on your team or test all the apps. It's up to you what you want to choose. Now, after you finish doing that, you'll get an invite that looks like this. So you can see here that we've got the invite to join this team. Now, all they need to do is accept this invite with their Apple ID and then they'll be able to join the team. Cool. So after they've done this, what should happen when they've accepted this invite? Now, I'm not going to accept this because it's not going to work because this is a temporary mailbox. But once they accept the invite, you'll see that when you go to your build, or I should say your app, when you go to test flight, you should be able to actually invite them to this build. Now, what this will look like is you'll first of all need to hit the plus button on internal testing to create a new group and then give it a name. And then in your group, you should then be able to hit the plus button for the testers and then select the testers to send them that invite. So you, I could select this email here, add it, and then they'll get an invite email that looks like this. So after they accept this invite email and they have test flight on their device, they should be able to test your bills going forward. So you shouldn't have to worry about, you know, them not being able to access your bills. So that was internal testing, but when you're working with external testing, it's a bit different. It's <laughs> so what you actually need to do is create a group first of all here. So again, hit the plus button on external testing and create your group. Once you do that within your group of testers, you then need to actually submit a build to Apple. So the build that you've uploaded, you want to hit the plus button, select it, and then submit that to Apple for review. Now, in terms of how long this takes for review, it could be two hours or it could possibly be you know up to three days it just depends but one thing i will say is that when you're filling out all the information for the build if you have any kind of like login screens don't expect the tester to register and create a brand new you know account give them a demo account to make your life easier so once you fill out all that information and submit the build what you'll then have to do is wait for it to you know be approved if it's been approved then what you can do is actually invite testers either via their email first name and last name here or what you could do is enable a public link for whenever someone gets that link they can install it onto their device so that's the difference between internal and external so you don't really need to worry about you know submitting your build if it's internal testing but if it's external 
you know, you kind of have to go through those steps. Now, later on in this video, I'm actually going to go into more detail about the limitations between external testing and internal testing as well. But first, if you're enjoying this video, feel free to give it a like. And also, I'd love to hear your comment in the comment sections below about, you know, ways that maybe you manage your users if you already, you know, kind of manage users using TestFlight. Now, when I was creating the groups before, you might have saw this little checkbox called Enable Automatic Distribution. Now, you might be wondering, all right, tons, like, bruh, you know, what's the, what's the benefits of us using this? But think about it this way, right? You might actually have a group of testers, i.e. like key stakeholders, who you don't want to automatically get every single new build because maybe you're just testing something out. I would actually turn this off if you have a group of testers where you want to give them the best build possible and choose what build that they can test specifically. So I just keep that in mind. Now I said before as well, that I'd actually give you, you know, some information on the limitations of the external versus internal testing. But the main limitation is the size. So with internal testing, you're actually only limited to 100 spaces for someone to test an app. Whilst with external testing, you have 10,000 spaces available. So this becomes an interesting decision depending on your situation. Now, the best way I like to look at it is that if you work for a team that's like part of a you know corporation and you have a small QA team, in my opinion, I don't think external testing is worth it because you might as well just invite the users and just use that 100 slots available because you're not going to have 100 people testing the build. Now, if you're someone who works in a bigger kind of corporation or if you're like an indie dev and you want to, you know, give it to loads of people without inviting them to your team, that's when external testing is useful because you don't have the limitation of needing to invite people to your team when you don't want them to be there. Another thing to note as well, and this, this catches a lot of people out, is that when you upload builds, they ain't there forever. <laughs> So you actually already have builds available for 90 days. So that's something to keep in mind as well. So you've got three months for a build before it expires. So keep that in mind. All right, cool. So if you're watching this video and you actually want to learn more about test flight, I actually do have an entire playlist this way here. <laughs> <laughs> we can learn more about everything else I do with test flight. Also, if you're interested in learning Swift UI from scratch, I also have a place as well that you can check out. Now that's everything from me. I'll catch you on a bit. Deuces.